I brought a couple toys with me. These toys will be available at the back of the room after, during the day. My name is Vincent Higgins. I'm the CEO of Optech 4D. We're a local Houston-based company that focuses exclusively on bringing virtual and augmented reality technologies into heavy industry. That's our total focus. That's our goal. That's what we do every day. Um, our focus is in and around. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry about that. Um, oil and gas, aviation, aerospace, um, and utilities. And part of the challenge here is obviously the hardware. To be effective, you need hardware that is user friendly, that is available in, in, in mass. And I'm going to talk today about smart glasses. Um, we are implementing those extensively in advanced proofs of concept in oil and gas and aviation, construction, and other industries. Um, I brought with me today what we have in the back, which is the latest ODG glasses. These won the Computer Electronics Show um, this year, 2016, uh, on, for all mobile devices. Uh, we were their um, software partner at the 2016 Las Vegas um, CES event. Very exciting to see what, what people are looking at in terms of the technology. Um, a little bit about the, the needs for the technology. This is basically a high-end tablet that you wear on your face. It's, it's completely inclusive of battery, a gyroscope, magnetometer, accelerometer. Um, it has uh, about six, six or seven hours of battery life. It's binocular, so you're superimposing information on your field of view. We take advantage of the um, sensors in order to allow the field of view to be completely clear uh, when the worker is in the field. So that by turning your head, you have in your periphery vision all that you need to do your work. We also use um, what we call our safe beacon. It's a sensor, a Bluetooth, low energy Bluetooth sensor with 15 other sensors that are turned off currently for future projects, but allow the um, end user to be proximity aware. So an example, we're doing a proof of concept project now in an oil and gas environment where we have an, a room filled with eight or nine large pieces of equipment, and there's a safe beacon on each of those. The um, petrochemical worker goes in to, um, to the control room, takes off his safety glasses, puts these glasses on, and goes to do his maintenance work. That maintenance work involves disassembly of a compressor. So we work, when he walks into the area in his periphery vision, he will see those eight or nine pieces of equipment just identified. As he walks closer to the piece of equipment he's interested in, in this case the compressor, uh, those fall away and instructions related to personal protective equipment. Um, do you, do you, are you supposed to be here? Do you have certification to be here? A hot and cold work permit, et cetera, et cetera. And as he gets very close to the equipment, the actual procedures and step-by-step -step are available to him. Um, very important um, for the worker that all of us be um, obviously intrinsically safe. So uh, with, we're working very closely with ODG, these glasses, uh, manufacturer, by September, October, they should be um, use, useful, usable in a harmful environment, what they call intrinsically safe. So it's an end-to-end -end solution, what we need. We need connectivity to the internet, um, and that's, that's through Wi-Fi in this case. We need uh, these devices to be context aware, and thus the, um, the beacons, and finally, we need some sort of database of information, and that comes through the cloud. So it's, it's not just one solution, it has to be an end-to-end -end solution to be truly effective. And for the client of the software which we develop, you go into a web portal and you upload your documents there and they are pushed instantly to, to the smart glasses. Um, the other aspect is what we've talked about earlier, uh, using the front-facing camera um, to allow for a type of video call that we see is of great value um, in oil and gas and other industries where there's a um, workforce that's retiring. Uh, the younger operators uh, in the field, we do mostly in oil, our work is mostly in oil and gas, um, 
are not nearly as knowledgeable and they need experts in the office to help them to do their work. So a particular scenario, you walk into the field, you're about to work on a piece of equipment, um, and we can demo later on, anyone wants to try it out. Your field of view is clear, you turn to your right, you'll see an exploded view of the centripetal pump, which you can turn. You can select a particular part, then you turn past the center, and on the left-hand side you have the documents that you need associated with that part to do your work. You flip a switch, either a gesture or a voice command, and it switches over to a uh, training video. And um, this brings me to um, the, the next slide which is all about bringing training and operations together. As a company, long term, our goal is to bring augmented and virtual reality together in the same platform. Now, how is that possible? Um, we've all seen the virtual reality displays. You know, you've got your Oculus Rift, your Gear VR, your VR1, and others. Obviously, you cannot do work with that thing on your head because you can't walk around. You can't see the environment around you. But with a, a, a set of safety glasses, you can. And our tests and our, our pilots right now is all, are all around turning up the uh, brightness of the display, putting maybe a darker shade, and actually having virtual reality training in an augmented reality set of smart glasses. And it's been very successful. Um, we are a virtual and augmented reality company. We're trying to bring it all into the same platform. Think about the offshore worker. I was talking to one of our colleagues, it's not Shell and Chevron, to my colleagues here. It's in their, one of the other large companies. And they're converting a lot of their e-learning to what we call 3D e-learning, something we do a lot of. And that's all about putting this, the e-learning content in a virtual world. And as you walk around, you know, you'll walk on the drilling deck, it will ask you questions. After a certain amount of time, it will ask you to take a quiz. It's very interactive. What's been happening, the big dread for an offshore worker is to go onshore for training. It, it is just, and the folks at this particular company say their training is the most boring, unengaging training that's out there. And they, they need to make a change. So this virtual reality training um, in a, you know, an environment, like an onshore environment, is a great solution. But imagine in your downtime as an offshore worker, if you're required to do four or six hours a week of refresher training on the same set of glasses that you do your augmented reality, your day-to-day -day work. Um, so our end game really um, is to bring augmented and virtual reality together. It sounds like something very futuristic. Um, it's not. Um, we've got some very good proofs of concepts today that are um, allowing that to be possible. Um, I hear about 2025 and 2030 and I'm thinking like 2018, not, not uh, 2020 or 2025. I'm very excited about the potential. Um, the other aspect, um, and we'll talk about maintenance and inspection, huge industry, the MRO industry, maintenance, repair, and overhaul for aviation and aerospace. We were at a conference recently, uh, 1,000 booths were the only virtual and augmented reality company there. Tremendous interest in this sort of technology for aviation and aerospace. We're very excited to be part of that. Um, I'm going to show you a quick video. The first and last sections are virtual reality. It's a, a, an example of something we did recently. Helideck landing officer training on an offshore rig where we actually crashed the helicopter into the helideck and you had to pull out the avatars and save their lives and follow step-by-step -step procedures that you could never do in the real world. And in between, you'll see some scenes around um, augmented reality um, where you're interacting with equipment, as, as we talked about, and, uh, and then we'll uh, talk more a little later. So this is the virtual reality um, offshore platform that we've used over and over. And then you know, this is where um, we're gonna be looking at um, interacting, in this case, with a gesture-based technology. We're doing a, uh, a call back to an expert, a remote expert, um, who needs help in uh, dismantling a particular piece of equipment. Um, in the field. He also has access to technical documentation, um, schematics, um, anything he needs to do his work in the field. And all of that with a, a voice or a gesture. In this case, we're showing the Aether glasses, which is a partner of ours. Um, this is our software for exploded views, pulling up information based on um, uh, what is needed 
In this case, the centripetal pump, and this is the shutdown procedure. And then training videos that can be pulled in um, in real time, you know, based on the database. And this is a target-based, I'm sure you've all seen this, a target-based type of um, augmented reality where you put the uh, information in the palm of your hand. And of course, you can touch the actual pieces there and pull up information. And this is uh, an application um, for aviation and aerospace we've built around um, maintenance and repair for a jet engine where you can pull the information, um, have it available to you, and all the documents, literally thousands of documents could be in your field of view um, and, and have access to those. And then finally, we we're back to the virtual reality um, simulation, hands-on simulation, where we allow for um, the hands-on in a virtual world. Our goal is vir virtualize, visualize what matters. What really matters for the field worker? What really matters for the engineer? What really matters for the construction worker? So they can do their technical jobs better. And I'm very excited. Maybe 10 years, maybe five, we'll see a certain amount, number of population actually wearing safety glasses that are smart glasses. Thank you very much.